useful. I mean, the zealots that warp in, the zealots with charge, are so useful. Notice how because I came from the backside, there's not that much retreating action that he can do. So just ripping through him, yes. Feeling very manly about that. And of course, right when I want to build cannons, I go, oh, he killed my forge, that bastard. But I'm liking this because... I have this super mobile army, I can be in a lot of places at once, I can defend myself in a lot of places at once. Unlike with the Colossus, where I feel like I have this sort of immobile, slow army, look I'm warping in more units up here, just sort of regrouping through the center, trying to catch them off guard, but I accidentally send these Zealots on the other side. So I do manage to take out one Hydralis, which I was pretty pleased about. But look, his expansion really hasn't been up that long. His gold expansion has only just begun mining, look at that, 1458 on the minerals, and of course I am already way more mined than that. So, oh, <laughs> gonna take a lot of damage there. And of course, walk my zealots directly into storm. Baneling's an interesting choice. Maybe it would have been more threatening if he'd continue to just make roaches and hydras, but of course, watch this. Uh oh. Ooh. <laughs> mm. Oh my. Feeling a little bit uh, l l less than prideful about the fact that I lost about nine Templars in that push. Um, don't really know why I didn't storm there. Don't have a good justification for that, but that's what I did. So I'm marching down here, and honestly, at this point in the game, I still feel like I'm losing, so I have a serious adrenaline, I'm like trying as hard as I can to focus, and I'm actually intentionally trying to wander this Templar up here to see if there's an expo. I end up losing most of my units, I'm trying to control myself a little bit better here, um, but I do manage to see that, oh, I didn't see any creep, ooh, fancy. So, of course, transferring. Hey, I have another expansion up. Always expand when you're attacking, because um, not only do you feel cool, but you set yourself up for a nice little economy. I just love going mass warp day. It is just so fun. And um, really, this is something I should have done a lot earlier, is continue to upgrade. I had that upgrade advantage early on and kind of let it slip, as we can see. he is uh, He's still 1-0, uh, but he is... Oh, he is actually not getting any upgrades. Uh, I suppose that happens later in this game. Or maybe I'm confusing it with one of the other epic games we played. Uh, but really, regardless, um, that was something that was nice about opening up with the, um, the pressure. Just messed up his drone count, messed up his expo timing, messed up his upgrades. Just messed him up. Oh, yeah. And, of course, I probably shouldn't be talking this pridefully about this opening, because, to be honest, we played one game where he absolutely Hulk smashed me, and then we played an epic game where I barely lost, and then won, and I felt really happy about it, and was like, ooh, I'll just do a daily on it. <laughs> so, whoops. Whoops, how shameful I have become. But of course, pushing up here. I wanted to get control of this watchtower. Not really intending on attacking anytime soon. Really just excited to see that he doesn't have this expansion up. I uh, want to be a little bit more careful not to lead with my Templar here. And it was after this game that I really started to focus on splitting up my units almost haphazardly into different control groups. Just having like, you know, four as Templar, one is some Zealots, two is some Stalkers. Three is some more Zealots and Stalkers, just because I really, really, really did not like how that much damage the Banelings did this game. And of course he's making more Banelings, he was doing some nice creative stuff with those. But I'm just waiting here until I can end up getting enough forces to regroup, and I do. And at this point in the game, I was like, oh my god, am I actually going to win? I was feeling all happy about it. So feeling a little bit joyful there. Maybe I would morph some more Archons in here, um, just because I do kind of have a lot of Templar. But of course, then I would have Archons, and that just doesn't really work well with my unit mix. And just continuing to macro my little heart out, really. I could probably easily throw down some more... Um, I could probably easily throw down some more units, some more gateways here. I have just now gotten a robotics facility. That's part of the reason why I parked units up here and just hung out. Because I literally have not had a single observer all game long, and he did some very nice burrow timing with the Banelings, so I just wanted to make sure that none of that happened again. Yeah! Mass gateways, and look how many storms I have available. Oh, that's going to be so juicy. And of course, throwing down some storms, miraculously hitting these burrow guys. And then I just go ahead and lose all my Templar anyways. Uh, again, I should be a little bit better about that. It's so much easier just to hit four click back if they were in their unique control group. God, they are hitting themselves. It would be nice if I just had one control group that I could easily pull back with a Templar and micro them independently, uh, as opposed to having to hit control click and that sort of thing. So I'm sniping wings, feeling pretty good. But regardless, action-packed, epic freaking game. The fact that I almost lost at the start, the fact that he almost lost at the start, and good game, yeah, feeling manly about that. But, um, so, to be honest, it's a little sloppy. I knew he was also trying to play around with some stuff. He was just, like, played, like, nine practice games or something ridiculous. But it was a nice opportunity for me to try going for this fast stalker thing. 
and then to try going for these fast Templar. I need to work a little bit on this period that keeps happening on Blistering Sands where I lose my back door and then almost lose the game, but then barely hold in because then finally Templar have that energy upgrade. Um, but either way, it was pretty, pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to um, hmm, drink some coffee. So I will happily, 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 happily. Um, so let us see. Um, oh yeah, this is a great question by Sneaky Rob. Why do you always mine with the worker after building gateways before scouting with it? Um, with the normal timing that, um, I'm trying to change this up a little bit when I end up having that probe mine, but if you build the pylon, mine, and then return it, what ends up happening is you get just five extra minerals out of thin air because that probe ordinarily would build the pylon and then come back and then build the gateway and then scout. Um, so it's a good way to just get a little tiny bit of extra minerals in there. That's the sort of edge that I'm really in for. Yeah. So, um, so let us see here. Um, what else is going on? Uh, yeah, this is actually a good question by Marchu GF. Day 9, why should anyone make High Templar instead of Colossi? Well, hmm, so there are some... There's some obvious benefits that, for instance, feedback is really helpful. You can't get fungal growth as easily. You can even pick off Overseers. And yes, Overseers have energy. It's weird to think that they now have cool spells to use. But what I like about High Templar is that they're so cheap. I mean, a Colossus is 300-200. That really eats into your ability to make gateway units. And in particular, eats into your ability to make upgrades. But, I mean, if I can get a lot of High Templar and still have a ridiculous amount of Zealots and I almost call them Dragoons, a ridiculous amount of Zealots and Stalkers. I like how aggressive I can be, and I like that with a more mobile army, I can defend more expansions a little bit more easily. Plus, imagine for a moment if we're playing on Metalopolis or something, and I'm going heavy gateway-centric force. If there's a drop in my main, and my army is not nearby my main, I can warp in High Templar, Storm, maybe do an okay job of defending, because I have eight or nine warp gates. It's a little bit more versatile to do that. On the other hand, the Colossus army is a little bit more of one giant bicep that, of course, can punch a hole directly through a Zerg's face, and, and that's very, very difficult for a lot of Zergs to deal with. Again, watch Sock vs. Mardo. Awesome series. Great use of Colossi. So, for instance, um, a, a, a normal-ish count is about four or five gateways and one... Um, one robotics facility, and then when you get another expansion up, it's like five or six gateways, seven gateways maybe, and two robotics facilities making Colossi. You just don't end up with that many, with that much production, but you do end up with a really solid, strong army. So again, I kind of like, I'm kind of playing with High Templar, seeing how I feel about it. High Templar can attack up, which makes them good against Mutalisks. You also have a little bit more freedom to make more Stalkers and all that good jazz. So yeah, that's why I'm sort of playing around with High Templar. Um... Let us see here. Oh, yeah. Hey, here's a good question by Endgamer. Day 9, it seems that everyone was underestimating the Phoenix until you did your casts on Noni. Uh, do you know of any people who have good Ultralisk play that you can cast and show us all how it's done? Well, with the recent changes to the Ultralisks, I'm very excited to see if players are going to be playing around with that. I like the change that they made to the Ultralisk. It does make them take one more shot from tanks, which is excellent. Um, I would be delighted, actually, if I could find some more... Um, fantastic fancy ultra play but either way ain't no thing so uh let's see here um so dj zaps says day nine you talk a lot about softening your build order's edge i've seen many top level players build depots pylons overlords right before their push even though they're about to lose units is it necessary that's actually a really interesting idea and i think i suffered from that a little bit in this game as well when i when um this big push was happening i was still adding on more pylons and i think i just should have added on more gateways and sure i would have been capped but then <clears throat> my money plummets all the way down. And those are some nice ways to actually create very clever builds. There are actually um, some Terran builds where you end up going tank Hellion pushes very, very, very aggressively. And because you kind of expect to lose the Hellions, you actually can get an expansion a little bit more quickly. So that's some cool stuff to think about. So um, let us drink a little bit here. Okay, here's a great question by Aquaman101. Dear Day... I always love when someone writes Dear Day, because it always makes me feel like someone's hand-penning a letter in a log cabin somewhere. So, Dear Day, do you think having added Immortals would help against this Roach Hydra um, composition? With some Zealots and High Templar Stalkers, in order to use up more resources, um, while gaining some heavy damage versus Roach? Ah, uh, that's... 
so that's a tough one. Um, I mean, so you hear me talk a lot about trying to streamline things out because I want all of you to just think about this for a moment. Because honestly, the best way to discuss this is to go to the extreme example. So think about this for a moment. Think of any army composition in any matchup. Think of your favorite build in the army composition that you get. Theoretically, unit X would make that way, way, way better. Un undeniably, there are more units that you could throw in there that um, you could say, yeah, this would definitely help out. But it's so dangerous to fall into that train of thought because essentially what you're saying is, hey, look at what I have right